Now let's talk about what we mean by structure. These definitions here are from the Oxford English Dictionary, which, if you're not familiar with it, is probably the most complete dictionary of the English language. But uh, the point is that I've selected a couple of definitions of the word structure that are the most relevant for our purposes here, though there are other definitions of structure to be sure, though they're largely similar to these. And the definitions that you get um, all have a similar sound to them. They're things like the mutual relation of parts of a whole, right? The coexistence in a whole of parts, manner of arrangement, an organized body of dependent parts or elements. They all have a fairly similar sound to them. And what all of those definitions share in common is this notion of organization. And the way things are organized can, can differ very widely, but what we mean by structure has the, these notions of parts that are organized or arranged in a particular way so that everything is connected. There's some pattern there. Now, when we talk about structure as patterns and connections, we have to be very careful because that thinking can run off the rails pretty quickly. Um, here I have a picture of the book General System Theory by Ludwig von Bertalanffy, I hope I've pronounced that correctly, which was published in 1968, um, which is an excellent book, by the way, if you're interested in the notion of complex systems. Um, General Systems Theory, the book, was part of this whole movement at that time in thinking about complexity and complex systems and how to study complex systems systematically. And that book and the thinking at the time led to the development of the entire field of system science and lots of subfields under system science, which to kind of dramatically oversimplify here, study the complex influences on complex systems, ecosystems, biological systems, cities, entire societies, right? These very large scale complex things that have multiple inputs, multiple processes, multiple outputs perhaps, that it's very difficult to study as a whole that you know the history of science really is all about sort of pulling apart complex systems to look at one piece of it or a few pieces of it in isolation but the question that system science tried to tackle was how can you take these very complex things and study them in all their richness and complexity without having to be reductionist about it and peel apart you know tiny pieces and pretend that those tiny pieces exist in isolation. Now, I don't want to run down system science because I actually think it's incredibly interesting and has led to some very interesting and useful research findings. But you have to be careful when talking about connection because once you start talking about things being connected at a large scale, suddenly the idea of connection starts to get very fuzzy and, and lose meaning, honestly. Um, you're probably familiar with the idea of complex systems, at least in the very sort of common conception of, there's a, there's a quote that's pretty well known. Um, the question, does a butterfly flapping its wings in Brazil set off a tornado in Texas? Yeah, well, maybe it does. But good luck identifying the chain of causality between one and the other, right? That's just too complex a set of relationships to really nail all of them down. Um, well, we understand weather reasonably well, but not that well. So my point with all of this is that 
if we're talking about structure, structure means connection. Structure means organization of things, sometimes at a very large scale. But for our purposes here, we need to be careful that we're talking about structure. We need to be careful that we understand that we're talking about structure on a very small scale. We're only going to be thinking about the parts and connections within a very severely limited universe. And that universe is the universe of data. More specifically, the universe of just the data we actually care about. Metadata and the data and resources that that metadata points to. So you will, I hope, recognize this figure as the Dublin Core Abstract Model, which of course is a representation of the parts and connections within the universe of Dublin Core and within the universe of metadata more broadly, because of course it was intended to be a generic model on which Dublin Core and other metadata schemas can be built. So, Next, we will talk about data structures, how data is structured. But before we do, I want to show you an example of why structure matters in perhaps a more human interpretable form. So, what is this? Perhaps this is familiar to you. If it is, great. If not, allow me to explain. This is what's called lorem ipsum which is dummy text for typesetting print materials like books and magazines and whatnot. I understand lorem ipsum has been around for a couple hundred years that it's been used in typesetting for a long time. I've read that supposedly it comes from some work by Cicero. I don't know. I don't read Latin. I've always assumed this was just fake Latin. But the point here is the way I've presented this text on the screen. It's just an undifferentiated block of text, right? It's impossible to tell what this is because if the text is in fact dummy Latin and doesn't really say anything, this is just a block of text and it's impossible to know what it means or what it's for. I could have replaced the lorem ipsum with just squiggles or you know random characters. It would have the same impact here. Now, if I instead take that same block of text and introduce some formatting, formatting on the page, on the screen, then suddenly this dummy text takes on the form of something that's recognizable. It looks like a letter. You have at the top who the addressee is, you have a couple of paragraphs, and then you have a sign-off down at the bottom. It looks like a letter or some personal correspondence. If I take the same text again and format it differently, then suddenly it looks like a different thing. It looks like an interoffice memo or an email, perhaps, right? You've got what is recognizably things we're familiar with, to, from, subject line, and then a block of text. Formatting, formatting on the page is a kind of structure. You're structuring the layout of text on a page. Now, let's be clear. Formatting is not the same as structure in the sense that we mean for structured data. But, like I said, this is just an example to, to show you that the way data, the way anything really, the way data is presented can affect its interpretation and its usefulness. So now let's go on and talk about structured data.